But if you're talking about global deployment of this technology, and if you go to talk about all the industries, not just coal, not that coal fire generation, talk about uh, other emitting process, and people now talking about even uh, forcing the gas generation to, to do car carbon capture, as you may know that already, then we have a number of issues. We have research gaps, right? That's why we're doing all these tests. We have issues with co uh, accumulating public and pri private funding. The cost of current technology is very high. It has to be dropped, otherwise it will never become a technology. We have legal impediments, and you would love this. I mean, who owns the pore space to put the CO2? You guys can debate this with Buzz next time you meet. Uh, people will tell you all sorts of different opinions about that. Public awareness and acceptance. The regulatory framework. I mean, if we have an issue or, or a leakage or whatever, who is responsible right, for that? Uh, most, uh, most permits, when you inject, say that you have to monitor for 50 years. Now, who's paying this cost? How much monitoring you do? All these are really unsolved or at least questionable issues. Then we have something that we, we had a project from DOE to do this. What about the professional and technical workforce? Who are all these people who work in this industry? You're talking about creating a totally new industry. That's an issue as well. So all this stuff is there. I would like to talk to you about two other topics quickly, and, and, and I will finish. Uh, we think Virginia, and I will s save some slides, is an ideal location to do an integrated carbon capture and storage project. We had a proposal to DOE. For some reasons, we didn't get it. And we're, we're going to come back. But this is a rendering of a drawing. This is the Wise County Facility Power Plant. And we had a proposal to build a capture unit in here. Uh, the plant is unique because it's carbon capture and storage compatible. So it can do all that, right? We had a $600 million project, 50% core share. Uh, for certain reasons, it was unsuccessful. But we believe we have a second chance in here. So what we'll be working in the next, let's say, year or so, is to go back and develop an integrated project between that power station in Wise County and a capture facility. And if you talk about capture facility, we talked a lot about enhanced recovery. I wanted to show you two slides. This here are all the emitting sources of CO2 within our areas. And this, this one pertains to a partnership that deals with Virginia, parts of West Virginia, all the way down to Texas, and here is a little bit northern that includes Pennsylvania and Ohio. What I wanted to tell you, this is out of EPAs, what I wanted to tell you is all these circles here are uh, CO2 emitters of very strength. If you look at this size of circle, it's one to five million tons per year. So if you're talking about decarbonizing the economy, what you're talking about developing a huge industry of CO2 and a huge pipeline system of CO2 to take that CO2 out to the places that you can do enhanced recovery. Currently, we only have that many pipelines, right? We need to do a massive infrastructure arrangement here. And if that is going to happen, then that provides a, humo a humongous opportunity for Virginia and Central Appalachian to get really to a huge CO2 development industry, both into the capture and transportation and utilization of CO2. Another opportunity is all the shell plays, who also can be enhanced using CO2, which were not counted on the previous slide. Last thing to finish is, we believe we have some ideas how to get together and partner with the Appalachian School of Law. We had a good discussion this morning. Shale gas is here to stay. It's going to be what is going to happen into the future if you look at the projections. And essentially, what we're doing at Virginia Tech, we're trying to develop a program that leads to a master's degree in natural gas engineering. We are well placed to do this. We have all the necessary stuff. And as I said, one of the main um, requirements for my center from the state is to actually do across the board energy program for the state of Virginia, which will be a very important issue in approving a new program. So in doing that, I think we can participate and cooperate with the Appalachian School of Law on a number of issues in terms of educational and courses and student advising, develop joint field project seminars and clinics, cooperate in other seminars and outreach activities, join research opportunities that we need a legal component, pursue other international opportunities. We do a lot of work internationally and more or less get a broader role about energy 
and sustainable development. So all this here include a lot of opportunities that both as faculty to faculty as well as student to student who can cooperate and develop joint programs. And I was very pleased about our discussion today and some of the plans we have how to do this in the future. So I want to finish by saying we are pretty busy in our center. We do something unique. We raise a lot of industry money, which is not the usual thing. Uh, also, we do a lot of uh, what we call demonstration scale projects. Most academics do work in the lab. We like to do larger projects in the field, which are quite complicated. I think we have a concept to do something big in Virginia. We'll be talking to the governor and some of his people soon about that. We talk to a number of companies, they will do others. And I think at the end of the day, we have a lot of things that we can do to help both our institutions move to the forefront in the energy field. And I try to talk as fast as I could. And I think I'll go to the end. So thank you for your patience. And I apologize for running a little bit late. So if it's okay with Dr. Karmas, I'd like to take just five minutes and sure. open up the floor for any questions that anyone may have. Um, I think it was a fascinating discussion about some topics and issues that we frankly don't know a lot about um, and, and don't deal with from a kind of technical and scientific perspective. So thank you for visiting with us today and talking about those issues. Could you put the slide on that shows the shale plays? Sure. Kind of rushed through that. I wanted to look at it a little more closely. This one here. This so, is from, this so which is the one that extends down in Buchanan County? Well, what we have here, we have the, uh, a number of, of plays, including the Huron and others who, sorry, who come uh, under here. And of course, there is uh, some shale development already in that part of Virginia, but not as much as it is, of course, the Marsala shale, which is the big play. But also, I should tell you that geologically, because we haven't drilled that many deep wells, there is possibly other places in Virginia who do have shales, who have the opportunity for gas development. So what you look at here is basically some of the most major ones. You can see the Marsala shale here, and the Utica, which primarily in Ohio. And the Utica is a unique one because it's, the gas there is what they call very wet gas, which means with the production of gas, you also get a lot of the fuels. So it's basically an oil well, as well as a gas well. So we're both learning more about our geology and what other options we may have. And then when we go down towards the Tennessee, we get to the Chattanooga Shale, which is here. These are not as big as these ones, or the Barnett Shale in Texas, but they are significant and ever evolving. And the other thing to say is that what people don't appreciate sometimes because fracking gets a lot of media attention, but actually what made the shale business the way it is, is not really fracking. People know and have been fracking, as I told you, for 30 years. is drilling horizontal holes. This actually is a technological achievement. You know, to drill a hole, which is, let's say, two miles down this way and then turn it into two miles that way, is something which is really quite significant accomplishment as you can appreciate. Now, 50 years ago that you couldn't do this, you could only drill a hole vertically so you have only a small contact with the shale. Now you go horizontally and you have contact all the time through. So I believe that in the next few years we'll see additional <coughs> improvements in the drilling technology. <coughs> and that actually is going to revolutionize the whole thing. If you're interested in this topic, go to the website of the Energy Information Administration, okay? And you will see a whole discussion about all the shale plays and where they are. And essentially, just to show you one other prediction here, is that slide here, which, what is the expected shale production? This comes also from the Energy Information Administration website. This is very current. This is a 2014 uh, projection. And what you see here is where we are now on shale production and how this shale is anticipated to increase over time. And, and if I show you here, which is the opposite thing, this is electricity generation. Back in the year 2000, we were 50% coal fired, right? 37% the year 2014, 32%. That assuming no CO2 regulations. That's what that says. If you had CO2 regulations, that 
to go vertically down that way. But but look at the renewable. Now nuclear in this country, as you know, it got stuck after the Fukushima accident in Japan. We lost a lot of our steam in trying to do more with nuclear power plants. So uh, a lot of that uh, has slowed down. And the other thing has happened is the very reasonable price of gas. Not only is challenging the coal companies, but also is challenging greatly the nuclear companies. So so gas. Just to give you an example, in global markets, it's about $4 here in the US. Uh, in Europe, it's about $15, $16. In Japan, maybe $20. Uh, and if you notice all these issues that are going on between Russia and the Ukraine, uh, energy and, and gas is going to be a big issue at the end of the day in sanctions and everything else. I think the geopolitical role, let me put it this way, of shale gas in the US has greatly been upgraded after the current issue between Russia and Ukraine. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Okay. Um, Dr. Karmas, thank you very much again for coming to visit us and, um, and for your presentation. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you all again for coming. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, thank you to Ms. Street for her help with coordinating a lot of this, and also to Professor Belleville, without whom uh, none of this would have been possible. Mr. Belleville, uh, Professor Belleville has uh, been cultivating a great relationship with Dr. Carnes, and we appreciate that. Um, and uh, we'll see you all later. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I'm a bit later.